welcome to another Tonic Craft Kit unboxing video. So today's one is kit number 36, which I think is going to be called the Nordic Diamond Bauble Box um, die set and like kit. Um, and if you had any of the Nordic Christmas collection from, I think it was from a couple of years ago, there was like um, an upside down sort of square based long pyramid kind of box and also um, an envelope as well and a little small gift tag and I think maybe they did something uh, maybe it was a magazine freebie with um, the Nordic design last year and then they've brought in um, that gorgeous kind of Nordic design again with the gorgeous little reindeer um, that was featured in those older um, die sets as well so if you have any of that this will work really nicely with it as well and although this is a box die set I have actually um, I've, I filmed a clip from a few weeks ago that I will insert later on that's showing you some of the box examples I'll also show you the construction of the box but it's super simple to do and I've got three card samples to show you as well because I just loved the look of the patterns and the shapes that you get in this kit that I just had to do some actual card making with the dies as well so let's have a look what we get in this month's kit I've just got the list next to me to make sure I don't uh, say any of the names wrong so uh, firstly you'll notice in this month's kit I got the little box again I love the cute little box because it keeps it all contained uh, it's a really nice way of keeping them if you want to keep everything together um, I get quite a few comments actually asking how I store my kits and I tend to have keep the folder with the dies, the stamps and the sticker inside and I put them in the actual folders that come um, with the craft kit and then I keep them on a shelf next to me but everything else I actually just split up into um, all the places where I store like my um, glitter accents and glimmer paste and all of my little glitters and my nouveau drops and stuff so I actually split it all up but I do tend to uh, like keep a screenshot on my phone of like what's actually was in the kit just in case I want to refer back to it but if you're not very good at putting your colours together it's quite nice to keep all of the bits and pieces already together so that you've instantly got um, a colour scheme to work with and you can pick whatever kind of nouveau products or craft perfect that you want to work with as well so I just thought I'd say that because I know I get quite a few comments um, asking how I store my kit. So anyway, uh, the first thing from the kit is another binder, which is brilliant. These hold maybe, I think, I reckon you could probably get five in here, but I, pr I usually tend to keep about four in mine, and I think you do get them every three kits. I think maybe we get four a year. Um, so you've got ample storage for your kits, uh, and you you know get you get these in with the craft kit at no extra cost. So it's brilliant. Then. Uh, I will show you the Nouveau stuff first because you know the Nouveau stuff is my favourite. I'm really excited about this. Uh, have, is the actual name on here? Oh, it is on here. So this is the third exclusive washi tape set that we've had in one of the Tonic Craft Kits. And this one is called Summer Fruits. We had a blue toned one to begin with, uh, which was in a Christmassy set I think last year actually and then we had a kind of uh, neutrally browny kind of toned or orangey yellowy browny kind of toned set that came out um, I think it had fairies in that set I can't remember the number of the kit but now we've got um, this gorgeous pink set as well and this like gingham tartan kind of one is really gorgeous I suppose this one's more gingham or, or checked maybe but this one is really stunning I love this one and on the um, clip that I'll insert later showing you the boxes that I made. I actually use some of these washi tapes to cover a piece of card and then I cut into it to create the panels to go on the box so you don't have to just use this as like um, something to stick down your envelope or to use it to keep your dies in place when you're die cutting. You can actually make um, a nice decorative feature of it as well and I've used it on one of the cards that I will show you too. But you get this gorgeous um, plain one and with washi tape if you've never heard of washi tape before I'm, I'm presuming you probably have but if you haven't it's basically just like um I think it's Japanese I think it's Japanese um they're just like really thin sort of tissue tapes that you can tear um that aren't as sticky as sellotape or double-sided tape or anything it's got a nice low tack to it so if you struggle with tape to stick down your dies maybe if it's ripping the cardstock as you run it through the machine um this kind of washi tape is brilliant for that i haven't been using mine for that just because it's pretty and i don't want to use it all up um you know using it to run my dies through but this would be perfect for that as well if you don't want to use it in your crafting projects i mean it might not be your style but um 
using it as a low tack tape is another use for it but that's basically just what washi tape is it's just like a low tack de decorative kind of tape that you can easily um, tear into little pieces to use um, in different ways I, I reckon um, just having little strips of this torn up along a card would be really lovely as well if you wanted to do some kind of mixed media -y looking kind of piece with collage sort of elements so that is the washi tape those three gorgeous designs they're all uh, I suppose they're not that sheer, they are a little bit sheer uh, but I actually put this one on top of gold and it didn't actually change the look of it too much but they're really gorgeous designs as well, I really like them it's nice to get a plain one too to mix up the designs as well so that is the washi tape then we're also getting a full sized glitter accents and this one is the Aztec gold which I think is one of the original ones that came out um, let me get a scrap of card and show you this colour. It's a gorgeous, like, um, it's kind of an orangey gold. It's a very rich kind of a gold colour. Really lovely. And um, glitter accents, you can do loads of different stuff with glitter accents. So I reckon it's basically just glimmer paste, maybe in a slightly looser consistency to be inside a bottle. So you can actually squeeze it out, use it with your palette knife and scrape it through a stencil. You can use it maybe on 3D projects that you're doing or a canvas or something as like a, th a thick three-dimensional kind of glitter glue sort of thing. Um, you, can, you can actually just make Nouveau drops out of it. If I zoom you in a little bit closer. You can actually make Nouveau drops. They will dry really textured. Um, kind of similar to how the stone drops feel when they dry they're kind of that same sort of a texture but they are very nice and solid uh, when they dry as well or you can just use it like um, in a more sparse kind of way and spread it out to give a glittery effect and then it's like instantly stuck on there rather than using a loose glitter as well so there's lots of different things that you can do with the glitter accents. I'm sure you've heard me talk about them in some of the other kit unboxings in the past as well. So that is the Aztec, yeah, Aztec gold um, glitter accents. Then you're also getting a full size Nouveau um, glitter drop. So it's one of their, in their crystal drop range, but it's a glittery version. And which is a nice complement to the Aztec gold actually, because it's kind of a bit more like translucent-y. I don't know if it's got uh, just the lighter glitter in it or whether the Nouveau drops are like less packed with glitter so it gives it that kind of more of a translucent -y look and it really does have that honey kind of colour to it but you can also spread this one out too um, if you want to do that kind of technique and the um, honey gold does actually have like little extra colours in it as well so it's not just like a gold tone it has got kind of extra little hints of colour that you see every now and then so that is the Nouveau drop. You can do tons with Nouveau drops as well. The main use is to just make like um, these little drops on your card. I like to do a scattering of them diff in different sizes. Or you can do like little dots that follow each other in a line to make an accent. You could do a whole border of them. You can pre-make them onto um, like a non-slip sort of surface. So either the white mat that comes with the um, Tim Holtz media mat or the easy clean mat that um, Tonic sells separately or even the backing sheet of a double sided adhesive sheet or even off some wide double sided tape as well you can make them onto that, leave them to dry and then they flick off really easily and you can store them in a pot and then just use your normal deluxe adhesive to stick them down onto your project that way you don't have to worry about messing them up um, as you're making them, you know, you can make loads of them and if they look a bit iffy, it doesn't matter, it's not straight onto your project then. So that is the Honey Gold Nouveau, Nouveau Glitter Drop. Then you're also getting a mini Nouveau Glacier Paste. So this is a, a gorgeous little baby gold one. So this is the Golden Era, I think. Yep, yeah, Golden Era really gorgeous and you get this gorgeous tiny little pot but these little pots go a really long way and especially with the glacier paste because um, I think I've said this before when we've had glacier paste you can use it thickly but it doesn't dry with that thick um, three-dimensional finish like if you were to scrape the same amount of thickness of 
the glitter accents through a stencil as the glacier paste this would dry the same as you saw it when it was wet it would be nice and three-dimensional but the glacier paste kind of flattens as it dries so I recommend using the glacier paste with like a sponge or even one of the foam um, ink blending tools and pouncing it through the stencil and maybe building up a couple of layers if you want to um, because I think if you apply it thickly although it does work you're kind of using up more product than you need to to get the same kind of effect so this little pot will go a really long way if you use it more in a thinner application and also you'll see in my card making video and I think I did it in um, on the boxes that I created as well I'm pretty sure I did actually um, I like to water some of it down and splat it on and it gives a really gorgeous look or in on one of the boxes um, as well I actually stamped with it so you can spread it out thinly onto your glass cutting mat and then tap your stamp into it and you can stamp with the glacier paste as well and it looks really gorgeous so lots of different things again that you could do with the glacier paste and you can even do that um, squishing technique that I've shown you before you could actually incorporate all three of these together between acetate or cardstock um, you know put it all on one piece put another piece on top squish it together and pull the other piece off and you get two backgrounds that give a gorgeous glittery micery um, kind of a background instantly for you as well so you can do that too then oh actually I've got my big pot of the gold here I might as well just um, flip this up and show you the actual colour so that is the actual gold colour that the um, golden area golden area golden era uh, glacier paste is that is the colour of it to show you so they're actually all slightly different gold tones which is really nice actually you can build up a good collection of gold to use on different projects although these two go really nicely together and I was actually using um, all three together on a card as well and they all equally um, go together really nicely which is brilliant then let me just wipe my palette knife, knife off then the next thing you get is also another full sized product you're actually getting one of the brand new Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pens this is the blush rosette one there were three that came out um, relatively recently. There was Blush Rosette, there was Sunlit Sienna, which is kind of more of an orangey, um, I suppose coppery kind of a tone. And then there was also the Opal Quartz one, which is a gorgeous kind of uh, sheer effect that gives a pinky mica look on a darker colour, which is really lovely. Um, so you're getting a full sized one of these, um, I haven't opened mine, I, I have had one that I've been using but I've actually given that one to my mum now, um, but I've got this one. So I've shown you how to activate the aqua flows quite a few times in videos but I thought I would just show you the aqua shimmer as well. So it comes in exactly the same way, this is like an aqua flow here, um, I haven't opened that one like this, this is you know a normal aqua flow, they're exactly the same but they just have the shimmer in as well and I think all the aqua shimmers actually, yeah, they're a, a clear suspension with the glitter in rather than being a colour so it's just the glitters that are the different colours in all of these ones so they come like this and they have the yellow band down the middle of it so you just want to um, unscrew the lid actually because the top of the pen is or the brush is actually uh, kind of inside the lid because you need the sort of screw thread from here to pull the um, brush out of the lid if you know what I mean so you take off this yellow band which um, you don't need to keep you can discard this you don't have to like pull it apart and put it back on again when you finish using it um, but I was actually keeping these because I think you know when you do a mixed media canvas and you want some kind of like interesting textures I think sticking a load of these on in kind of like a fun uh, bubbly or um, a mesh kind of a pattern I think it would look really nice so I'm keeping those for that reason um, just in case you haven't got a, a reason to keep them you know you might think of something uh, mixed media -y to do with them and basically then you just put the lid back on um, screw it as much as it will go then pull the lid off and you can see that the brush has now attached to the screw thread and then you can just continue to tighten that and um, the sort of valve system that's in the lid has then punctured into the bottom portion which means that the liquid can now flow out of the valve um, and that's why that stopper is there just to stop it leaking in transit and then you can see the um, the bristles come with the sizing on so they're kind of stiff and then um, they're all white as well and obviously when you get the 
aqua flows which are the coloured ones they obviously are all white until the colour comes down but in this case it's going to be glitter so um, the way I activate any of these kind of things especially with the shimmer ones though you want to shake them you can hear in this one there is a ball bearing because of the glitter and every time you use one of these glittery um, shimmer pens you definitely want to shake it up so that you get like an even distribution of the glitter coming out of it as you're using it so give it a good shake and then you want to press the barrel it says press so you don't want to press too hard but oh wow that came out quickly you see you just want to press enough to get a little bit flowing into the bristles and then you can sort of tap the bristles into the puddle that's come out to um, kind of get that sizing off of them and allow them to be a little bit more um, su what's the word supple that's it um, it just sort of gets that uh, sizing out of them and then this is the gorgeous colour that you're getting from this. So this is actually just glitter in there. Wait a sec. If I dry this, you should be able to see that better. Okay, so you should be able to see that gorgeous glittery effect that you're getting in there as well. So you don't actually want to have too thick of an amount of this glitter on your project because um, I think I've shown it in the past where you can make like a cool inky background and then squeeze the glittery ones into it to get a lot of glitter out and to make a cool background however I noticed with uh, the blush rosette and the sunlit sienna if you put too much out it does kind of rub off a little bit just a little bit though it's just transferring a tiny bit onto my finger it's not too noticeable but um, if you're worried about stuff like that you can always just spray um, a little bit of cheap hairspray over the top and then it's definitely not going to come off and go anywhere but it's only a tiny bit that comes off but it's just when you've added um, too much like over here nothing comes off it's just here where I've added um, a bit too much of it but in this area it's fine so uh, that's just something I thought I'd point out as well so that is the um, blush rosette aqua shimmer and then the final Nouveau thing that you're getting is a random selection of two glitters. So this is the Jingle Bells pack of glitters. Where did I put that here? So this is the four pack that they come in. Um, so you've got the Ruby Red, then you've got Olive Green, Festival Gold and Antique Copper are the different colours. All of them go really nicely with the kit. I got the uh, Ruby Red and the Olive Green in my kit. So um, you'll get a random selection of two. You might get red and gold, you might get green and brown, you might get red and brown, you might get green and... I already said that, red and gold. Um, all sorts of different combinations that you might get, but all of them work really nicely together. And you can... Uh, there isn't any green cardstock, uh, but you can bring in the green as different accents, you know, with the cardstock as well. And... Um, I was actually using these with double-sided adhesive sheets, you know, the Craft Perfect one that Tonic make, um, and having it behind the intricate panel as well. So you can do that on the boxes, but I've done it on a card to show you, but you can equally transfer that to doing the boxes as well. So that is all of the Nouveau that's in this month's kit, which is kit number 36. Then this is the dies, the stamps, and I got the sticker this month as well. So this is the gorgeous little sticker that says Love, Peace, Joy, because this is like a Christmassy kit. I don't think I said that already, but it is. It's a Christmassy kit. Um, lovely sticker, really nice. And then we have got the stamp set and the dies as well. So um, I have also said this in a few videos too, but I might as well say it again just in case you haven't seen it. Um, when you get the tonic craft kit you get the die set split into two halves on these two acetate sheets that come in these um, cellophane bags um, I keep the cellophane bags to put other bits and pieces in like when you've got too many extra die cuts and stuff um, and then I actually take this is just a cheap magnetic sheet off of eBay I trim it down to just smaller than A5 so it'll fit nicely in the folder and then I just transfer all of my dies onto that um, 
because that way I know the adhesive's not going to run out on you know the sticky bits of foam that are on here and everything's going to stay um, stay put when it's standing upright in the folder um, on my shelf as well. So that's why I tend to put them on the magnetic sheet. Um, and you've because you because it's split into two sheets, you've kind of got to play the guessing game of how does it fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, so it all fits on an on an A5 kind of sheet. Because usually when you buy a tonic die set, um, it's just all on one sheet and they're all nested inside each other for you. So you kind of got to figure out exactly how they fit together so they all go onto the, the sheet. And these bits actually, I keep these two because this foam usually comes off relatively easy. You can pull it off like that and then you've just got the acetate to use for your shaker cards as well. So I keep those pieces too. So nothing goes to waste then. And then all I'm going to do is just finish putting all of the dies onto here and then I will show you them all. That wasn't too difficult to fit them on this time. Okay, so let me zoom you in a little bit more. And then this is this month's die set. So what did I say it was called? I've forgotten the name of it again. Uh, Nordic Diamond Bauble Box. So it actually creates a gift box that um, it has a square base to it and it kind of has this squeeze top. So this piece you actually squeeze and it sort of pops apart and opens. Um, and I will show you how to put it together at the end as well. But um, it's a really interesting box and also... I think it would be great for when, like, say you want to give all your neighbours just some chocolates or something. You could buy one of those bigger boxes of chocolates and split it all up and just give them sort of a handful in a box like this. I think that'd be really lovely. But it, it's also, um, because it's got the little hole at the top of it, it would also be great for decorating the Christmas tree, hence why it's called the Diamond Bauble Box. It could really be an actual... A decoration for a tree or hanging on a, a bough or something or up the stairs or you could even make 24 of them and do it as an advent calendar too which would be really nice so this is the main box that is the oh no, I'm too close okay this is the main box and you need two of these to create your box and you just stick them together here and then obviously you pull it round and stick to the other side but I'll show you that um, and you can get um, all the pieces out of just one A4 sheet which is brilliant. It, it takes up less than an A5 sheet so I'll actually show you the two pieces onto an A4 sheet to show you exactly how much card it takes up. So that is the main portion and then you have this gorgeous triangle panel which I'm sure a lot of you will think the same thing but as soon as I saw this I thought I've got to do that as a Christmas tree on a card because that's just the perfect size for a Christmas tree. Um, and you can actually use these two panels inside it too. It's a little bit, um, like they are smaller, so they're a little bit smaller inside it, but I kind of offset it on my card to give it a different look. And you see this panel um, is actually oriented this way because that's the way the box is, but on my card I've actually flipped it up the other way and it still looks really nice, even though this bauble kind of appears to be upside down, it still looks really nice. So you have that gorgeous element to decorate there and then you also have this oval um, in the centre of it which is the ideal place to put these little sentiments and you get four different sentiments plus the actual oval to cut them out. Now the way they've had to do the dies, you can't cut them both together, you have to cut the little oval first and then stick the die on top of it and cut it out or you could just place the word straight into the panel and cut it into the panel if you wanted to do it that way as well. But the four little words that you get are this one says love then this one is joy, then you've got Noel, and you've also got peace in there as well. Um, and these just look really nice cut into the card anyway. I've cut one of them into uh, this circle shape just to be a sentiment on my card actually. Um, so you can do that with them as well. Then, so as well as this main triangular panel, you've also got these two pieces because the way the box is put together... Um, 
obviously the two sides are opposite so you need the two different panels to put this one together and the the little deer face each other which is so adorable it's got that tiny little Nordic deer in them and they're both facing each other or if you um, die cut these both together to give you another triangular shape they're both sort of facing away from each other which is also really sweet um, and then it's full of like little snowflake designs there's a little bird down here you've got like stars more snowflakes that bauble bits of foliage and stuff there's all sorts crammed into those designs so you've got all of that to decorate the front and back of the box you would need two of these panels and then two of each of these to decorate the whole box and plus two of these ones as well and you've got two different designs to pick from so you've got this gorgeous one that's mainly like snowflakes and stuff and then you've also got this one which is like hanging baubles on it as well and then as well as that you've also got two tags which I think are really useful and you don't have to just use them as a tag if you just wanted a small circle or oval aperture you could cut that as an aperture into your card because it wouldn't matter that the little hole cuts out as well uh, but the great thing is the hole does cut out so if you're making them as tags you haven't got an extra step of having to cut the cut the hole out of it which is brilliant and you have um, a couple of different designs to go inside them as well so you've got this little one which has got the little Nordic design with the little um, deer on there and the bird and a couple of trees and a star um, which fits perfectly in the circle tag and then you've also got a little bauble design which fits perfectly at the bottom of the circle tag or I mean that's the oval one there but you, you can put them directly opposite the hole or you can have them at a quirky angle as well and I think that looks really nice too um, and then you also have, might as well just leave that one in there, and then you also have the oval design where the hole is kind of at the top, but you could use this, obviously you can only kind of fit this one way because it's an oval, uh, but you could use this tag sideways or like up this way as well, so there's a few possibilities with that too. So that is the die set. And then to go along with that, you've got this adorable little stamp set. I love these little words, tiny little words. I'll take it out of the cellophane. But tiny little words in here, aren't they so adorable? You've got winter, merry, Christmas, wishes and cheer. So you can do Christmas wishes, merry Christmas, winter wishes, Christmas cheer, all sorts of different combinations. Then you've got the love, peace, joy, which is the same that's on the sticker in a small version. But that would also fit really nicely on the little tags that you get. So they've sized everything absolutely perfectly to fit with the little tags. They'll fit with the circle and the oval and same with this merry and bright one down here. Let me zoom in a second. And then also this merry little Christmas would fit perfectly on both as well and joy. And you've also got the to and from to be able to stamp on the back of the tag as well, which is really nice. You've got to and from and the little dotty lines if you want to put them there to indicate where to write. You've got stunning little snowflakes and a little star, which I've been using on my cards. And this gorgeous little heart design as well, which I really like really gorgeous little stamp set and I want to show you a technique actually once I've shown you the cards I'll show you um, a technique that I was just doing on those cards as well and then finally from the kit we have also got the craft perfect and we've got eight sheets this month as well and a really nice um, selection of reds and kind of goldy tones too. So we've got one sheet of classic cardstock which has got that gorgeous weave texture on one side and smooth on the other and this is the tan brown cardstock which I think might have come out in the woodland walk colour trend. I think it possibly did, I can't actually remember, but um, a gorgeous sort of tan colour which is kind of like an old goldy sort of colour that goes really lovely with the gold tones that are also included in here. Then we've got this one which is absolutely stunning. I don't know if you saw my video on the iridescent card from Tonic but it's, it is so beautiful this one. This is the Firestone Red and it's so lovely. Actually, the, my camera, I've got a new camera by the way, if, if you notice colours are coming up nicer, like these pinks actually look pink. Um, but it's not picking up the rainbow as much as my old camera, which is peculiar, but you can actually see the proper colour of this now. The actual um, gorgeous Firestone red colour. I really love this um, holographic card. Beautiful, iridescent card, really beautiful. Then I've got 
this one, which is the uh, pearlescent red cardstock uh, in red velvet, and it's a gorgeous double sided pearlescent colour or card. Um, so on both sides, which is really nice actually if you want to um, maybe do maybe cut the detail into the box so and from the other side as well so you might be able to see the inside of the box but instead of having like the white of the back of the card like for example on this one you'd actually still see the red on the back which would be really nice so this kind of card is great for anything that you might see the other side of the, the card as well which is brilliant then this one is another one of my favourites this is called um, Golden Satin uh, it's really pretty, it's got like this, it really does look like satin actually, and it's got um, a slight texture to it, not as much as like the, the silk cardstocks that they do. We've actually got crimson silk next, so I can show you the difference between them. But this is the golden satin, and it's one of their like luxury embossed kind of cardstocks. And then this is the crimson silk. There is also a gold version of the silk kind of cardstock, not in this kit, but there is one. But you can kind of see the difference. The um, silk has got an actual texture, whereas this is, I suppose the satin one kind of feels a bit more like lenticular cards you know we get like those um greetings cards and stuff with the lenticular finish on them it's more like that kind of a texture um but that's the two next to each other if you want to see a comparison but this crimson silk is stunning oh, what color trend did this come out with must have been last year must have been last year it really doesn't feel like that long ago but it must have been the merry and bright color trend um, but it's really pretty i love that one too and then this one is the honey gold satin mirror card which i've got a really cool technique to show you with this um i better not forget to show you i'm sure i'll remember when i show you the card that i did it on but a really fun technique for using your clear mark ink pad with this cardstock and stamps to give a really cool effect and then you're also getting one of the cotton specialty papers and this is the ruby gemstone um, which definitely came out in the merry and bright colour trend last year look how gorgeous that looks and this one is actually on black rather than on white and it's got more of like a metallic finish rather than a pearlescent finish but look how lovely that's catching the light really pretty and you can actually see some of the black poking through as well which I think is really nice because it gives that automatic kind of shading and stuff to the the texture on there but if you don't want red for your project you can actually just color the back of it as well with your nouveau mousses or even the um the glacier paste would probably look really nice on there too to give you a gold tone as well or even just picking up some of the detail on top of the red with the gold would give a really nice look too and then finally we have a sheet of welsh gold um glitter card and the way i've got my lights set up i can really see that shine really really pretty jam packed full of glitter and their glitter card doesn't shed i mean it's like a couple of specks i don't know if it's even going to focus tiny little specks come off but not much at all so it's a really good quality glitter card and it die cuts really nicely even with the fine detail which is brilliant so that is the eight sheets of cardstock i'm just gonna tidy up a little bit and then i'll come back and show you my samples and the technique and how to construct the box as well. So I think I'll show you the technique first. This is actually something that I saw um, Dawn Bibby do donkey's years ago where you take a satin mirror card and you stamp on it with like one of these clear mark or um, watermark kind of ink pads and then this kind of ink on top of the satin effect gives you the mirror card effect. Um, and I did that on one of the samples, which I will show you. Um, and it wasn't drying, so I decided to use a heat tool on it. And then when I dabbed away, like, to try and make sure the ink was completely dry, it actually took the gold colour off and left a silver colour, which I think looks really nice. So I thought I would actually just show you the technique. So that I did it on this little panel here. And you can see how you've got... I, I did smudge it there. Um, but... You can see how you get that gorgeous like silver effect on the gold so i thought i'd just show you that because i think it's a really cool um technique so i was using this gorgeous little heart from um, the stamp set 
and then I've got the little mini clear mark ink pad they do a bigger one as well but they've recently come out with the mini one with the metro grey and the black shadow and that was in the white wonderland colour trend they've got a little mini set of inks I, th I can't remember the name principal inks maybe the name of the set I'm not sure I'll try and link it below though um, but really really useful to have this small size so all you do, obviously you've got to be a little bit careful because um, this is a really sticky, slippy kind of ink and you're working on a slick surface. So you've just got to be a little bit slow and careful. You could use a stamping platform if you uh, weren't confident with not sliding around all over the place. So I'm just going to do a little bit in this corner to show you. Hopefully it will work as well as it did just now when I filmed the other video. So all you want to do is stamp that on there and then I just took my heat tool because I was trying to dry the ink um, and I just warmed it up. I didn't even show you the ink on there. You can see the little heart stamped on there. You can see how glossy it is. Sorry, I was talking with the heat tool on. So you can see the hearts stamped on there and you can see how glossy it is because the ink hasn't dried. That's how I smudged it before because I poked it and uh, it wasn't dry. I just heated it a little bit and then I just took some kit yeah it's working again so I just took some kitchen roll and you rub over the top of it this looks better than my first attempt because I was doing it onto the card before because um I hadn't realized that it wasn't properly dry but look how cool that looks it's such a cool technique and I'm sure it would work on all of the other colors of um this kind of cardstock that tonic do as well this satin stuff I should have a piece of purple around here actually have I got a piece I do. I've got a little bit of purple. Let me try it on this as well. I'm just interested to see if this goes silver too. I think it will. So let's have a go with that, see if it works. Oops, smudged that one. See, this actually gives the shiny effect that I'd seen Dawn Bibby do all those years ago. Gives that actual shiny... I smudged that one too. It's because I'm brushing. You can see the difference between um, that one where I didn't move and that one where I did move. But that is the actual effect that I was going for, where you can see this is the satin mirror card, but where I stamped, it just looks like normal mirror card. It didn't quite work the same on the the gold mirror card or it's more evident on this purple but let's see if we can get this to go silver as well i noticed the finish kind of change on this actually so i don't know whether it's going oh no it doesn't work the same on here that's really weird no, it's just left weird smudge marks now. It doesn't work the same. That is strange that it only works on the gold. I mean, it might make, it might work on other colours as well, but it doesn't work on the purple. Very strange. But I think if I'd left that stamping to dry, I would have got the actual um, effect. Like if I'd left it to dry without heating it, I think it would have got the actual effect that I was going for. But anyway, um, I just thought that was a cool effect to show you. Um, so, now I will show you the cards that I just did. So this is an actual video altogether. They're not quite dry because I only just filmed it. Um, it's just the Nouveau drops that aren't quite dry. But you can see how perfectly the die works as a Christmas tree. And this is where I have used the two side panels together and created a smaller triangle which I just offset in the bottom corner of the aperture of the larger tree and then I put a piece of the washi tape up there and I think it looks really nice. I think it's a really cool contemporary kind of Christmas card and then I just used those oval sentiments and did Peace, Love, Joy um, down the edge of it. I've used the green glitter that I got in my kit um, behind that aperture and I also sprinkled a little bit of the red in first because that kind of made a heart where the two designs came together then to finish off the background, 
I wanted to show you this as well. The two colours of ink, which I found went absolutely perfectly with um, the colour scheme for the kit, and especially if you get the green glitter, are the Parakeet Green um, Nuva Hybrid Ink Pad, which comes in the Tropical Paradise colour trend, and then also the Rich Rosewood, which was one of the originals. So there was four sets of three originally, and I think this one came with... I want to say the orange and the purple. I can't 100% remember, but I think it came with orange and purple. But it's the rich rosewood one. Um, is the perfect kind of red for these sort of uh, the crimson silk cardstock and stuff. Perfect red. So if you want um, ink pads that coordinate perfectly with the kit, they don't come in the kit, but they are like perfect for coordinating with it. So that is that first one that I did, and then the whole I've got like a whole scattering of um, the gorgeous uh, snowflake stamps in the green the parakeet green then I also watered down some of the uh, glacier paste and splattered that on and then I also came back in with some of the honey gold nouveau drops and dropped a few of them on as well and that gave that finished card which I really love I really do love how that came out and I think in different colors as well this would look really nice um obviously I've been sticking to the colors that came in the kit but you know you at home you can mix this up um, with whatever colours that you want to do as well. I think it would look really lovely. Then I also did this one, another Christmas tree. I wasn't planning on doing this one, but as I was die cutting everything, I just decided to uh, die cut another um, tree and do it from white like this. So for this one, I actually um, die cut the triangle from the panel, you know, just the white triangle from the panel, and then use that triangle to cut the intricate detail out, and so I'm not wasting card, there's actually just a hole behind there, but because I added the cardstock behind it and then trimmed around it to give a slight little border, uh, you don't know that I've trimmed the tree out from underneath it, which is really nice. And you can see here that is upside down, because that bauble is going upwards rather than hanging downwards, but it, it's really not that noticeable. I mean, I know it's supposed to go up the other way because that's the way the box is made, but um, I think anybody receiving this card wouldn't really look at it that closely to know that that's upside down. Um, again, the background is done the same, using that parakeet green, just more of the snowflakes, uh, and flicking on the golden era glacier paste and then adding the honey gold nouveau drops as well. And then behind the detail white tree, I've used that firestone red... I've still got a piece of it here. I keep chucking everything off to the side of me. That gorgeous Firestone red cardstock. And all I did was I trimmed a piece down that was roughly this kind of size. You'll see it in the video. But I trimmed a piece down that was roughly kind of this triangle sort of size. And then I just splodged on a few drops of the Aztec gold um, glitter accents and a few drops of the honey gold nouveau drops. And literally just patted it with my finger to get um, just a a sort of dispersed out glittery effect in random areas so you've got that gold going in behind the design as well to tie the gold accents that I'd put on the outside too and then I've used one of the gorgeous little sentiments I really love these little sentiments and look how finely that's stamped as well and those tiny words stamp really finely too which is really nice so that is the second card from the video that will be up um, I'm sorry if I get behind on filming or on editing my videos. I know uh, last month I've only just uh, put those ones up as I'm filming this video, so I'm really sorry for that, but um, I've been really busy this month, so hopefully that's alright. I mean, I, I'm, loads of you left really nice comments, so I know you appreciated them. So anyway, the third video from... The, the third video, oh my goodness, the third card from that video um, I tried to make it even more modern looking, so I just used those cool right angled triangles from the panels. I know these panels are sideways and that reindeer is pointing upwards and that one's pointing downwards, but again, I don't think people really notice, or, I mean, I did the sentiment on a slant and actually, it would look really nice that way. Maybe I'll keep it that way, maybe I'll photograph it both ways for the video, so that you've got um, a choice of which way you might want to have it. I had intended for it to be this way because of the hearts as well maybe the hearts look funny if they're on their side i'm not sure but anyway it could go either way you could change the direction of the hearts if you recreated this you know and do it um so it's a portrait card um but i wanted to show how you could just cut uh, those words into 
like another die so that is the circle tag obviously the side without the hole and then I just cut the love into that and then I've tucked it behind this panel and then I've used that tiny little Christmas word die curved it to the same kind of curvature of the circle and then stamped it on top again with that um, rich rosewood red colour which goes absolutely perfectly and then the background again I've used rich rosewood uh, red for the snowflakes and then I've splatted on some of that glacier paste and then I've also put a few little Nouveau drops in various places as well to kind of finish it but I thought it made a really nice modern sort of Christmas card um, and I think these make a pretty nice trio of cards or pardon the pun trio um, but yeah I think it's a really cool kind of way of using this kit because I know a lot of you, um, I, I do read all of your comments and I know a lot of you aren't that keen on the 3D die sets that Tonic do but I mean that is kind of what they're known for especially in the UK but I know in America they're probably known more for the Nouveau and stuff rather than the three dimensional die sets but I just wanted to um, like give you some inspiration for how you don't have to actually make the box you can just use these gorgeous panels um, just as they are to create some really nice Christmas cards as well so I just wanted to show um, or give you some ideas of how you might want to use them like that as well um, and then finally um, I'm going to show you the construction or maybe I'll no actually I will insert the clip of me uh, past me showing you the boxes that I have created and then I will show you how to put it together as well. Okay, so these are the two samples that I created using uh, Kit 36, which is actually using the die set as it is supposed to be. I'm hoping somewhere in this video I will have shown you, or will go be going to show you, um, some more samples that I've done, not necessarily using it as the box, and I'm sure I'll add in a construction in this video as well, so that you can see um, how easy these are to put together as well. So I did one that is slightly more subtle, um, using some of the glacier paste that you get in the kit and also the stamps and the glitters that you get in the kit and then this one I well I wanted to use a lot of the different card stocks and show how even though you can put gold on gold you've got different kind of finishes of gold so it looks really nice together and also showing you um, a maybe different way than you might have thought of using washi tape because you get the gorgeous three pack of washi tape in the kit as well so let's show you this one first. This was made using the tan card from the kit. Um, I did use slightly more than one sheet and you only get one sheet in the kit but you might already have um, some of this cardstock lying around. But the way I did this one is I took the little Merry Christmas stamp. I don't know if you can... It is quite subtle. I think you can just see it here. Um, I took the little Merry Christmas stamps from the gorgeous little stamp set. I love this tiny font. It's so cute. Um, and I just stamped it with the um, clear mark sticky ink just to give that kind of like slight watermark kind of effect. D all over all of the panels I just did that. And obviously make sure that you're stamping this panel with the triangle that way up because that's the way it fits on the box um, so that it will all be the right way up when it all goes together and then you can see there I have actually stamped with the glacier paste with the two snowflakes from the little stamp set as well and all you do to stamp with the glacier paste really simple you just take a bit out of the pot um, and all I did was I had a palette knife and I just scraped it onto my um, glass cutting mat in a really thin layer and then you just literally use it as if it was an ink pad so you're just tapping your stamp into the thin layer that you've put out on your mat and then you can actually stamp with it and get this fabulous effect and then you'll also notice some splatters on there too so once you've finished all the stamping and you've got a little bit left on your mat just add some water to it mix it up with the palette knife then take a small round paintbrush and flick it on as well and then you get this gorgeous um, splatted kind of a look on there as well and I did that on um, all of the separate panels and I also splashed onto the main two panels of the box as well not that you can really see it that much because well, here you can actually see it better because it's actually going over a fold um, but you've just got like little extra splashes in different places on the box as well just in case it was visible I thought it'd be quite a nice thing to do and then once I had stuck all of the panels to the box I then just took my um, Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive which I have added the lid 
of a woodware fine tip bottle to it to make it a more of a precision um, and then I just ran a little bead of glue all the way around the edge of all the panels and used one of the glitters that you get in the kit as well. You might not get the gold glitter um, but I think it would look equally as nice with the red, the green or I think it's a brown colour of glitter. Um, I think any of them would look just as nice and you can also use some of your Craft Perfect or other cardstock from your stash that would match the colour of glitter better as well if you want to. Um, and then for the little sentiment I just took the circular gift tag and one of those tiny little sentiments, they're so dinky I love the way it cuts it in an oval like that as well um, and I just layered that up on there and added the same glitter around it. I just used some um, thin kind of twine to tie a bow and to add the string of the tag and then I also tied the top of the box together with some raffia and some brown twine as well just to finish that off so this one is actually shut you would have to undo that bow to open the box um, I'm sure I will have shown you how the box actually works but it's this squeeze top kind of a box this one is a little bit stiffer because I put um, the cardstock panels on here so you kind of have to um, ease it open a little bit but you still get that squeeze top effect to the box so for this one I wanted to use the washi tape um, in a different way give you a different way of using it so if you notice behind these intricate panels which I cut from the fire red iridescent mirror card um, the washi tape is behind there so I took strips of the kind of check one and the gingham kind of one just laid them right next to each other butting them right up to each other on a scrap piece of cardstock could be white could be a color obviously something that would go with the colors just in case it shows through um, but any kind of cardstock that you want and then all you've got to do is line your die up and cut your die out of your like homemade paper made with washi tape so um it, it looks seamless as well. You can hardly tell that that is actually strips of washi tape behind there, but it gives a really nice look. And I've done it to that top panel as well, and the same on the front of the box too. I just thought that was um, a different way of using the washi tape, and I love that fire red um, cardstock on top of there as well. Then for the tag, um, I used the little gorgeous Joy just in an oval on top of there. I used the fire red for the main body of the tag and then for this bottom piece I cut that gorgeous like snowflakey kind of detail just into the um, satin mirror card and then I backed it with the... Um, is it called gold silk? I can't remember the name of it but it's that silk kind of cardstock with a stripey sort of effect on it um, that you get in the kit obviously um, just behind that and then on all of the little snowflakes or um, I suppose there could be poinsettias as well um, on all of the different panels I've used the Aztec gold glitter accents that you get in the kit just to accent all those pieces um, as well just to give it a little bit of extra sparkle and then so I've done that with just with the triangle and this scalloped portion and then the side panels I've actually used um, the satin gold mirror card and then backed them with that um, silk mirror card making sure the stripes go sideways so they're really nice and visible um, and it gives a really cool uh, tone on tone gold effect you wouldn't have thought it would be that visible but because of the texture of the silver silk card underneath I think it gives a really nice look um, and you could have done the whole box in either of these methods but I just wanted to show you a couple more um, different ways of how you could layer up your panels as well but don't think that you have to back your panels you could have just you could just have cut the fire red and stuck it straight onto a red cardstock or you could have cut this box out of one of the specialty cards from the kit if you wanted to as well um, and then just have the detailed panels stuck straight to that rather than having to back them again um, or you could actually cut the detailed panels, stick them onto the double sided adhesive sheets that Craft Perfect make and then use your glitters through them so all of the details behind um, would just be glitter as well which looks really gorgeous so that's another way of doing them too. Uh, but I really like this box, I'm sure I will have talked about it in a bit more detail but um, it's a really clever des design the way it's got this um, squeeze top on the top of it so you can still get your gift inside um, but it's got a gorgeous like square bottom, it's very well designed that it can go from flat to square um, it's yeah uh, it's really clever though I really like it um, 
and so those are the two that I've created with it and hopefully there will be some other examples of uh, cards that I've done with it and then also I should put in a construction it's really easy to put together but I will throw in a construction there just to show you which ways to fold the score lines and stuff so that you know exactly how to make it when you get it as well so I'll, I'll pass back to uh, future me to finish off the video Okay, so I hope you enjoyed seeing the boxes that I created. I can't remember what I said in that clip now, but hopefully it follows on to this. So, to make the actual box, you'll have seen exactly how the box works now, but to make the actual box, you just need two of these. And I said I was going to show you. So, this is an A4 piece of card, one of the pieces that you get. But this is just to show you how you can get both of them, both of the panels, out of one piece of A4, and you've still got this space left. So you can actually then cut some of your panels out or create a matching card, you know, following the similar kind of ones that I've just shown you. Um, and you can use the rest of that card to make something that coordinates as well. Um, I think, yeah, I made both of those boxes I just showed you from Craft Perfect, didn't I? So, the you know, from the, uh, the textured stuff, the 216 GSM. So especially once you've added all of the panels on, it makes it a nice sturdy weight for these boxes as well. So, uh, you can see quite clearly, I think, where the tape is. So you want to put the tape on the two tabs here, on these two bottom tabs, and just on one of the bottoms of the boxes as well. And you don't want to put any glue here, because um, I made that mistake when I was making the first one. I hadn't thought in my head how the box actually opened, and then I was putting it together thinking, hmm, that doesn't stay together very nicely. So I put some glue in there and then went, oh, that's how you open it. Um, so I had to kind of pull it apart and stick some panels inside to kind of cover up where I'd messed it up. But so that is the only places that you need adhesive. And then the idea is that the box squeezes open like you've just seen, and the way you kind of hold it together so nothing will fall out, or no one can peek inside it, is that you would just use a ribbon to tie it through the hole. And that's how you would kind of um, seal it, really. So, um, score line wise you want to fold these ones towards you, I think. And then I've just been using the um, Tonic Glide Folder. I really like this. I was using this Tonic one before, which is equally as good. Um, but now I've got this one, I'm like, I really like this one. But this one is equally as good. And this one is great on the scoreboards as well. Because you kind of apply quite a lot of pressure on the scoreboard. You know, like the Hoogie board or the grey one. Because I think Tonic bought Hoogie or are collaborating with them. Um, and have their grey one now. Uh, but these are really great for those kind of scoreboards because of the metal tip. It doesn't like wear down like these ones do. So um, yeah, definitely recommend both of those. One is this one is quite a bit more expensive, but I think it is definitely worth it. The amount that I've used this, it's definitely worth the price that you pay for it. So the first one, I think you want to fold it towards you. Yeah. This, so we say fold this one towards us. It doesn't matter if you do fold them the wrong way. You can easily fold them back the other way um, and then the long tabs down the side you want to fold away from you and when I say fold towards you or fold away from you um, you want to keep the professional edge of your card up and then fold this one towards you and that one away from you that's kind of what I mean I hope that makes sense I don't know if I really explain it very well but hopefully it makes sense and then with the bottom tabs on this you want to fold, fold all of them away from you as well and again, you can burnish that fold line just to make sure you're going to get nice crisp edges. And then with the diagonal lines, you want to fold them away from you as well. And this cardstock I'm using is the tan cardstock that you're getting um, a sheet of in the kit as well, just in case you were wondering. And the box that obviously you would have just seen, um, I had used this cardstock and then I had used some of the glacier paste to stamp on it and stuff to give it a cool kind of look. So now we've got everything folded, we want to start to stick it together, but it's really easy to put together. You just want to take the tape off of one of those long tabs and then you want to take the other one and line it up. So when I'm lining this up, I'm looking first at this corner here. So 
right here you want to get this line to be lined up and you want to get these like two diagonal score lines so they're meeting quite nicely and you want to get this side of the card to be lining up straight along the score line of the other one so that's kind of what I mean when I'm lining it up and then the other one is really easy because this is symmetrical so it will just fold flat and it makes it really easy to kind of line this up and also if you were um, say selling these um, somewhere you could easily have them all in a bag flat with instructions of how to glue the last bit together uh, which would save a lot of space as well or if you're uh, batch making them ready for gifts to give to people and obviously there's a few months left till Christmas you might want to keep them all flat until you know like November or December time so that you've got them um, they're ready but they're not taking up a massive amount of space as like a 3D box you could just keep them all flat like this and obviously uh, if you're decorating them you want to decorate them um, now as well you can pre-fold them before or after you decorate them really but you kind of want to decorate them before you put it together just so that you can uh, press the panels on really nice and firmly as well and then you might be thinking that's not really going to work but all you do is you sort of squeeze it like I just did and that's how you're going to get the whole box to go together so it's going to have a square base but then it does this really cool prism -y sort of effect with all those triangular lines and then the top it squeezes like this and that's how you open the box which is really clever but you can see how you know it sort of goes together like this and then you squeeze it and then it had gone back together like this and I was like oh why is it doing that I need to put adhesive on there so then I stuck it together and I was like oh now I can't open the box so uh, don't make that mistake that is how you get your gift in and out so don't stick the top bit together just use a ribbon or some twine to sort of tie that and make it look pretty so for the bottom really simple you fold the two little flaps in first take the adhesive backing off of those ones you can use um, your wet glue as well um, sometimes I like to use just a mixture so you might want to put the tape on and take the backing off like that and then just add like a little bit of glue and it helps you especially when you're doing something that needs to be square it helps you give you a little bit of like wiggle time so that oh, I'm putting the wrong one down as well because I'm talking to you um, it's, you've got like a little bit of wiggle time just in case it's not quite square you can kind of it's not the instant grab of the tape you've got a little bit of the glue there to help move it around so you put that one down first so that now your next lot of tape is revealed and then you want to pull all of the backing off of these bits you can use whatever width of tape that you like I was just using six millimeter because those uh, longer side tabs um, the six millimeter fitted really nicely on them and then I'm just going to fold the bottom of the box over and that gives you your perfectly finished bottom of your box and then it just opens like that really really easy you can see how simple they are to put together um, and I think that just really makes a nice little pouch for chocolates and stuff um, or for an advent calendar I really think it would make a really nice advent calendar too so that is the gorgeous little box and how you construct it so um, I hope you enjoyed this up close video, I'm not sure how long it's been because I think I've stopped and started a few times um, but this is kit number 36 of the Tonic Craft Kit and it's the Nordic Diamond Bauble Box die set and it has that gorgeous little deer design um, and the trees and stuff which go with some of the other Nordic designs that Tonic have brought out in the past if I remember I will, and if they're still available to buy, I'll try and link as many of those down below as well um, just in case you haven't seen them before and you want to have a look at those lovely designs as well and also I will put all the links to the Tonic Craft Kit below the video too um, there's a few different ways of getting the Tonic Craft Kit uh, and I think one or two of the ways make, make it a, a slightly cheaper price so you can either buy it as a one-off kit which I think is £35 um, or you can buy it as a one-off like monthly subscription that just rolls over or you can buy it as a three monthly subscription so you can uh, buy a block of three and then your subscription will stop after three of them um, it just depends you know if, if you like getting a surprise every month you know you could just go for the three one and then you know you've got three kits coming but I think there is a way of um, like suspending your subscription if you're not keen on the one that you've seen that's coming out I think you can do that I'm not 100% sure but I think you can um, but I, I really do love these kits. I mean, I know um, 
I get them sent early so that I can make these videos for you. But if I didn't get sent them, I probably would buy them because, you know, they're really nice little selection of everything put together for you and you could actually just like only have this out on your desk and see how many things you could create with it how many christmas cards you could get out of it i mean i know you you'd probably have to add more well obviously i've used white card stock that wasn't in the kit but add card blanks and stuff to it and see how many um cards you can get out of it with like wacky color combinations maybe as well maybe use all your favorites up first and then see what you can do with all the leftovers as well so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this month's unboxing video. There will definitely be um, a sped up video showing you those three cards as well. I'm not sure if I'll get a chance to do another one, but there'll definitely be that one up too. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!